So we're going to do it in a form of questions. These are questions that I've heard from some of you, uh, some of our residents, uh, our board members. Uh, and uh, so today's uh, presentation is in a form of questions. Where are we? What's going on? What's happening? Uh, where do we go from here? So let's, uh, let's get started. So what's new in the Four Corners? It always seems that uh, we like to start in the four corners of Penfield. That's kind of our, our, where our, our heritage uh, really started in that area. Uh, a lot of people refer to it as uh, the village of Penfield, even though we know it's uh, not. Uh, but that's kind of the hub of uh, where uh, uh, Daniel Penfield, our found you, founder, started. And it's always good to just give a little update and snapshot as to where we are. So when Jim spoke to you in October, uh, the building next to Marks was standing. Uh, that's now on the ground. Uh, that uh, area is settling and uh, we're looking for the new building to start uh, sometime in March. Once that new building uh, is uh, up and operating, uh, what will happen is that they'll close the doors of the existing marks, open the doors of the new one, not miss a beat uh, and continue to serve all of you with uh, your favorite Mark's Pizzeria. Uh, then those buildings will be torn down to make way for added parking and uh, tie that whole area together with a park uh, walkways and uh, make that uh, certainly a hub that uh, folks will want to come to. We had talked about uh, distillery moving in across the street from Mark's uh, in the uh, former church. Uh, however, uh, so for those of you that uh, were hoping for a distillery, that's not going to make it uh, because of the load loading on the floor. Uh, so uh, the distillery is out. Uh, the woodworking uh, shop uh, is soon to be in. So that's what uh, they're currently looking uh, at uh, for that area. Unfortunately, as we talk about uh, uh, businesses, sometimes uh, we have to talk about the reality uh, that uh, some businesses uh, just uh, are not able to uh, continue on. And unfortunately, that uh, is what happened with the Otinis. Uh, the owner of that property is currently looking at a new tenant, and uh, we look forward to seeing and welcoming a new tenant in that. Uh, certainly our thoughts are with uh, uh, the owners of Yotini's uh, overall. Uh, Itacate uh, completed their patio, uh, so they're looking forward for the snow and ice to disappear and uh, to open that up and uh, to get into that uh, uh, continued good service uh, that Jose and his family provide uh, at Itacate. And then a parking update. So this is always near and dear to, uh, to a certain group, and, and certainly the Broodies have been a very part of, uh, a big part of that. Um, we, we continue it an inch closer, um, and uh, I've got to I've got to reflect uh, back and uh, and say, Ron, you were you were you were right on, you were spot on, and Ron said, I always get nervous. Uh, when the attorneys get involved and how slow things tend to go. So uh, Ron's prediction was spot on. The good news is, is we got all the paperwork for two of the three properties. Uh, Dick Horowitz uh, has shared with us as recently as this morning uh, that uh, the third component uh, is almost there. And uh, then we can close those three properties and then we start that next phase is to do some uh, update and renovation and uh, making that area a lot more open and beneficial for the businesses uh, in that area overall. And then at Philbrick Park, uh, when we combined our DPW, uh, that building has sat empty for a period of time. And whenever a building sits empty, it uh, starts to decay. So what we've done is we formed a partnership with the Penfield Central School District. And the Central School District uh, was busting at the seams at their bus garage. And so we, they've peeled off the facilities uh, and grounds. They've moved them down there. That's freed it up uh, for the buses on Five Mile Line Road. And uh, they are leasing uh, space uh, from us essentially at the cost of uh, utilities for that site. Keeps the building active, gives them space, gives them a plan, uh, certainly, uh, that uh, they can then sit back working with their Board of Education and uh, certainly figure out what their next steps are. But we're delighted they're there. We're glad that we can accommodate, and I believe it's a win-win situation for both the town uh, and the school district. So what's going on along Empire Boulevard, North Penfield? I heard North Penfield. Thank you very much for that. That's always great. Everyone usually says to me, so what's going on up in Webster? I don't know, call Ron Nesbitt, I'll give you his phone number. But in Penfield, along Empire Boulevard, uh, there's a lot of good things happening. Uh, Baytown Plaza, we've, we've talked about that. Uh, they have started their work on grading. Uh, they're going to be looking at doing, uh, as the weather breaks, uh, doing some utility relocation. 
there is an area that uh, they're looking on and an access point uh, and uh, that's between Uncle Bob's and uh, the DeMarco property Baytown uh, on Sovereign Drive. Uh, hopefully that will be worked through. If it isn't, uh, there are certainly uh, plenty of other access po uh, points for that. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to Baytown finally uh, getting, getting some steam and uh, moving forward uh, in 2015. The South Point Apartments, uh, four of them are out of the ground in some uh, way, shape or form, as well as the clubhouse is almost done. Uh, so one of the buildings is currently being sited. Uh, the other one is uh, got the roof on it and uh, somewhat enclosed. And then the other two are uh, in various stages. So there's nine buildings ultimately that uh, will be going there. And uh, they've worked on their roadway improvements uh, through that area. And so a lot of good activity. Uh, and I think the plan is to have that uh, start to rent uh, in May of uh, this year. So I would figure May, June start to look uh, for residents uh, in uh, the first building overall. Next door at the uh, marina. Uh, the town has approved the, the marina and then the what we'll call the land side. Uh, they've got a clubhouse uh, restaurant uh, that uh, will be going in there. Uh, currently, um, they are working with DEC uh, to get their Article 24 permit, uh, which means that they can stick something in the water like the docks. And uh, so they're working very uh, closely with DEC uh, to do that, dotting some I's and crossing some T's. Uh, but they're ready to go uh, this spring on the land side to start uh, working on that area and then to get the docks in uh, shortly thereafter. Uh, Sanibel Restaurant uh, has a new uh, operator looking to go in. So that building has been empty for a period of time. So uh, look to see the, the Sanibel. And I think it's the recovery room, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is the name of, uh, of that uh, operation. Uh, LaSalle's Landing Park. Uh, a couple of things that are going on there. Uh, the first thing that I'd uh, like to just talk about is, is that uh, through a lot of work with Jim Costello, currently has a permit in with DEC to put some docking facilities and we hope to have that happen uh, this uh, spring. And that will allow safer uh, uh, launching of kayaks and canoes and uh, things like that down in that area. Also on that area, uh, the board is taking a look at uh, a, a butterfly beltway garden uh, in that area, uh, kind of consistent with some of the things that are going on uh, in and around the community. And uh, one of the things that we're looking at uh, would be to uh, possibly recognize a former supervisor um, you know, in that uh, area. More, more to follow, I don't wanna give away anything more than that, uh, but more to follow as, uh, as we move forward. Uh, Qdoba is out there, they own the property. Uh, they've, the property's been cleaned. Uh, they're currently back and forth with some designs of the buildings. And uh, hopefully, again, we'll start to see activity there uh, this, uh, this spring. And uh, there are some townhouses uh, that are being proposed uh, behind the Agway. Uh, and uh, currently, uh, the developers are, are talking with the town, the planning uh, development services, and uh, our assessor, and uh, looking to uh, come in uh, to develop some townhomes uh, back behind there. And then if you've been down Creek Street uh, recently, uh, a building just kind of popped up. Uh, I was down one week, it was, it was not there. The next week, it was there. And I understand that uh, they're uh, gonna see patients next week. So that's how quick that activity, that, that activity has uh, been going along uh, over there. So let's talk about Lloyd's Corners. Lloyd's Corners has, has uh, seen a lot of activity and uh, a lot of you have seen it or participated in some of the uh, new facilities that are there. Uh, Panera Bread uh, is up and operating and uh, unfortunately the Panera Bread that uh, was in Panorama is now closed uh, and this is the Panera Bread that we, uh, that we have uh, in Penfield. Uh, very shortly you'll start to see Chipotle uh, start to uh, uh, dig and uh, get in the ground and uh, they want to get up and operating. Just east of Chipotle, uh, there is an office building that's uh, being proposed and we've just signed off on the plans uh, for that. Uh, that'll be moving forward. Uh, the Filkins property, and the Filkins property is uh, between Sarah Jane's uh, building uh, and Whalen Road. Uh, it's that last house uh, on the west side. Uh, the town has owned that property and uh, you'll see that uh, building being torn down. Uh, a small parking lot uh, will go in there and uh, we will tie that piece of property, which ultimately uh, butts Harris Whalen Park, 
and we'll have some trails uh, so that uh, you'll be able to go either from 250 uh, up into Harris Whalen Park or Harris Whalen Park down to 250 and uh, we'll use it as a, a back door to our Harris Whalen Park uh, site. And then sidewalks will be uh, placed along the front of that area as well. The Y expansion, as everyone heard, um, you know, I think, uh, uh, you know, Kevin uh, gave us the update that uh, very shortly he's looking for a ribbon cutting, turning, the, turning that uh, portion uh, over to the U of R so they can build out and, uh, and then uh, that facility will just continue to grow and uh, be used even more than, than what it is uh, today. Uh, Heathwood, uh, Heathwood is uh, proposing uh, to the north of their facility, uh, Nancy had talked about that, uh, adding on some additional units, approximately uh, 41 or 42 additional units in that area. So they're looking at, uh, at adding on to, to Heathwood and, and certainly we're, we're so delighted to have a number of different facilities within this community uh, that provide uh, so much support uh, to our senior population, uh, depending upon where they are in that uh, continuum. And uh, so uh, I know that uh, my oldest daughter uh, works uh, and is part of the uh, legacy operation and she already has my room picked out for me. Um, all I have to do is decide which legacy that it uh, it's, is uh, that I'm going to be living in. Um, the uh, Beyond Hardware, as, uh, as many may have seen, uh, Beyond Hardware closed its doors. Certainly very sorry to see um, that, uh, that operation, uh, Beyond Hardware, uh, be impacted like that. It was a great resource um, and uh, provided a lot of great support. And so we wish uh, certainly uh, the owner uh, of, that, uh, of that facility all the best uh, in his uh, future endeavors. Mathnasium. They're looking to move from their current location behind Dunkin' Donuts in the Four Corners, and uh, they'll be in the plaza down at uh, Wegmans, right around the corner from uh, what used to be Stobbs uh, clean Cleaners uh, on, along that side, and uh, Joanne Fabrics and uh, Target. You're impressed uh, that I know all that stuff, you know, but when, when you live with a lot of women, Joanne Fabrics is a, a, a place to be, so I, 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 and I know that store well. And then various uh, medical offices that uh, we're gonna start to see uh, along Penfield Road. So it'll start uh, next to Summit. Uh, there is an eye doctor looking to go in at that location. Uh, the uh, right at Harris uh, Whalen Park Road, uh, there's an orthodontist right in front of uh, one of the elementary schools. Ingenious, I think that's just a great, uh, a great thought and idea. You drop your, your child off uh, to the orthodontist and then uh, you push them up to uh, school to get started for the day or vice versa. So it works, uh, works out pretty well. And then a couple doors down from that, uh, a dentist office. So um, that whole corridor continues uh, to have uh, an ongoing increasing theme of uh, medical. Uh, so that dentist, uh, doctor's offices, uh, you know, urgent care, those, uh, those types of things. So uh, you'll see a lot of activity in and around. And then I don't wanna, I don't wanna shortchange, not, not necessarily in Lloyd's Corners and, and not necessarily in the Four Corners, but just up the street, the Shaw property. Uh, you, you'll see their building that's uh, underway. Uh, they're uh, currently before the town to put a, a small addition uh, on their existing building. And of course, then they had a small building behind that. So a lot of activity on the Shaw property, uh, kind of a family event uh, over there. Um, what's going on in uh, Panorama Valley? Again, a lot of activity there. You'll start to see in spring, uh, this spring, this past fall, you saw some earthwork uh, where Hampton Inn is, which is the former Rinky Dink Golf, up across, uh, diagonally across from uh, uh, Paychecks and next to Vision Dodge. Um, and uh, so they've got their infrastructure in. You'll start to see that come out of the ground. Uh, 71 units uh, will be at that uh, site, uh, so there'll be a lot of activity going on there. All of the dealerships in and around that area have had some type of a face list lift or update uh, here uh, over the last year, and some are still going on. Dick Eyed uh, currently having some uh, work uh, done there. Um, the uh, outdoor store closed. Uh, that property is owned by the Eyed family, and uh, currently they are parking some extra cars there, and uh, they'll be coming to the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, to uh, get uh, their final blessing uh, for the storage of vehicles uh, at that location. Uh, Ellison Heights is looking to start uh, this spring. And that's uh, just down from Gentles, kind of in between Penfield Road and what we call Old Penfield Road. Uh, so we'll start to see uh, those uh, apartments uh, going up in that area. Uh, a new park behind Tops uh, has been completed, was completed last year. 
uh, with uh, some expanded trails. A canoe launch uh, was put in. Uh, a small shelter uh, is located back there, and uh, we'll continue to look to uh, develop that, uh, that area. Property adjacent to Popeyes has sold, and while there's no specific plans uh, today, uh, their engineer has been in to have some conversations uh, with Mr. Costello and Mr. Valentine as to what uh, they might be able to do at that location. I think when Jim was here in October, uh, we talked about AutoZone, and so uh, the brakes have been put on, no pun intended, uh, for AutoZone. Um, the plaza has sold, so there's a new owner, and uh, so currently uh, what they're looking at is uh, what to do with that building. Do they tear it down like was originally planned? Uh, do they leave it as it is? Uh, with Panera leaving, uh, I'm, I'm sure there's just a number of things that they're trying to, the new owner is trying to evaluate and uh, figure out uh, what the next steps are overall. Uh, Penfield Place expansion, and, and uh, for those that might not know where that is, Nelton's Funeral Home um, and uh, the, the plaza uh, where you have uh, Steve's restaurant, uh, Charlie, uh, not Charlie Brown's, but um, Michael's, Michael's, thank you very much, Michael's uh, Valley Grill. And uh, so back up in there is a, is a, a, a facility uh, called Penfield Place. And they're looking to uh, add on to their facility. They're currently before the board. And uh, so they're gonna be looking to go to a, a number of more individual single rooms rather than the doubles. So they're gonna be uh, reducing the number of doubles and increasing the number of uh, singles and doing some modifications uh, at that location. And then uh, Taekwondo expansion. Um, and so this is where I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a very proud uh, grandparent, uh, so before I talk about Taekwondo. Um, Monday, Monday, I had the opportunity to go down to Master Kim's Taekwondo and uh, watch two little girls who are very special to me. A little six-year-old who got her advanced purple belt and our just turned nine-year-old granddaughter who received her black belt. So uh, very, very uh, delighted for that. So thank you, thank you. Master Kim does an outstanding job. Uh, his program has uh, continued uh, to grow and uh, he needs a lot more space. And uh, so he's going to be leaving his current space in Panorama Plaza, moving down in the plaza to the former Fashion Bug. He'll be almost doubling his space and uh, looking to uh, create even more activities uh, for our kids. And, and I just have to say, just a, a great program that touches so many families, uh, and he does such a good job. And, and to me, I was having this conversation earlier, it really is about the kids. Uh, uh, when uh, Steve uh, Pello and myself, Ralph DiTucci, were talking, it really is about the kids and looking for things uh, for our kids overall. Um, so is there anything new on Browncroft? Um, and uh, a couple of uh, updates there. Uh, the town board uh, will approve a contract uh, to install sewers in Parkview White Village. And that's one of our last subdivisions that uh, do not have sewers. And so uh, that will start in June. It'll span into early 2016. Um, uh, Linda on our town board, uh, that's uh, her neighborhood is to where she grew up and uh, she's been very supportive of moving forward with that and uh, so that's finally underway. And then Baker Commodities uh, has not been in the news of late but it has been in the news of the past and the town board continues to work with DEC, the health department, uh, the residents of that area uh, trying to address uh, that ongoing on again off again odors at uh, Baker Commodities. They do a very good job supporting not only our community, uh, but surrounding areas, taking uh, waste and dealing with them properly rather than being in the landfill. Uh, however, they have had some issues operationally that uh, we're looking to get our arms around. So what's next with the mixed use uh, districts? Uh, so that's uh, been a project that I think we've reported on for multiple years. And uh, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update as to where we are. Uh, so as you recall, uh, we have four mixed use areas. We were concentrating on uh, looking at studying two of them in a lot more detail. Uh, one is the uh, 286-250 uh, along, uh, along that corridor, and then Manitou Lake. The Manitou Lake property, uh, we've just found out, has been recently sold. Um, and uh, so that's about all the information that, that we have at this time. Uh, the the prop, current property owners are working with the new property owner owners, and uh, so as soon as we find out more about that, 
uh, we've encouraged them to take a look at the mixed use plan so that they understand some of the dynamics that are going on uh, in that area. But more to <coughs> excuse me, more to follow, I'm sure. The second area is uh, along 286 Atlantic Avenue and Route 250. Uh, the plans um, uh, have, were recently uh, submitted to our consultant um, uh, so that uh, they could give them the final review. Uh, we look to have those back shortly, if not already back in house, but look to have them back very shortly. The next steps uh, will then review it with the committee, bring it to the town board, and then the town board will look to uh, adopt uh, that document. And then uh, that will open that area up for uh, possible development for mi mixed use. And again, the mixed use is some combination of residential in varying forms. It could be single family, it could be apartments, it could be townhouse, townhomes, uh, and uh, commercial. And uh, so uh, that uh, you'll start to see a little bit more activity uh, in that area and along that uh, along that uh, particular corridor. I always like to give a little plug for the town uh, on two fronts, so these are my two advertisements. One, if any of you would like to get involved on any board or committee, uh, please uh, submit your name. Love to have you. Uh, we're always looking for uh, people to get involved. Uh, we currently have over 100 people that are involved with our boards and committees, and we like to continue to grow and expand that uh, where we can. So if there's an interest, uh, drop us a note. Linda's here, chat with her. Uh, it, any and all folks are, are welcome, and we always try to look for a connection if we can do that. My second, uh, my second ad today is, is that if you have an interest in, in, uh, in being a sponsor uh, of our amphitheater series, would love to uh, have you. A lot of great music, a lot of activities uh, for the kids uh, during the course of the year, some great music uh, that, uh, that uh, we bring in, and a lot of different uh, fun types of uh, festivals. So for those of you that have supported us in the past, thank you. And for those of you that might be potential uh, new sponsors, uh, thank you in advance uh, for that. And uh, Steve Orsini at, uh, at our Recreation Department uh, coordinates that, uh, or certainly you could uh, call my office. So this is the Jack Best slide. Uh, as I was uh, putting this together, uh, this is kind of the Jack Best slide. And I've, sa I've saved the best for last, Jack, um, as it relates to, to Aussies. But um, the mobile, th these are the sites. Uh, so we've got four or five of these sites, not counting residential, because we have a few uh, areas of residential. But these four or five sites, uh, we can be doing a great job and, and we can uh, look good as a community. But these four or five sites always are that anchor. Uh, that's what everybody sees, that's what stands out. That's the thing that Jim Costello spends a lot of his time because uh, I'm always nipping at his heels, the board's nipping at my heels, the residents are nipping at our heels. So we're always, we've got that circle going of trying to address uh, these. The mobile, uh, Jim has been recently in contact uh, with the DEC. Um, they have been doing some ongoing testing. Uh, they're starting to get closer. That's a good sign. The, the, the bad news is, is that they're just not there. It just seems like this is going to be one of those last things that we're going to be dealing with as, as we exit uh, going on to our next career. But DC uh, has, has at least kicked that up uh, a little bit uh, higher on their list. The Gray property, Atlantic Avenue and 250, a lot of work has been going on there. They've been actually in there digging out contamination and uh, backfilling that uh, with the proper materials. And the good news is, is very shortly you're gonna see the building lying on the ground, uh, which has been a real eyesore uh, to, that, uh, to that corner. The dry cleaners, uh, which is down in Panorama next to the ESL, um, a little banking uh, ATM. That site uh, has been one of those sites that uh, fenced off, weeds growing, just looking uh, absolutely terrible. Uh, DEC uh, shared recently with Jim that uh, starting in June, uh, they're gonna start to make some efforts uh, to get that cleaned up and moving forward. And the owner still has an interest in uh, doing something there. Originally there was uh, talk about a car wash, uh, but at least uh, we're starting to see that move along. And then Aussies, uh, the good news is it's got a new face on the front. Uh, the bad news is, is that the individual that was looking to operate that has just fallen off the face of the earth. So at the present time, there is nothing planned uh, at that location. Uh, the good news is it does look a little bit better, Jack. Uh, so we keep, uh, we keep pressing that uh, as we move forward. 
So in 2015, this is just kind of a heads up for, for those of you uh, along that have any businesses along the 250 and the 441 corridor, just a little bit of a heads up. Uh, the state uh, is going to be doing some pretty extensive work there. Uh, we don't have the official schedule as of yet. We continue to work with them. But they're going to start from East Avenue, and uh, they're going to rehab 441 easterly all the way to Dublin Road. So right through the intersection of, at 250 and uh, all the way up to Dublin Road. So we have been working very closely with them to try to have as most of that work done in the evening so that we're not jamming up 441. Uh, we try to do it in a way that uh, a lot of it can be done. Some homeowners are going to probably be upset because for an evening uh, we may be in front or the state may be in front doing the work, milling everything out and doing the repaving. But we thought uh, for one evening or two evenings it was better than just having everything tied up for weeks and months. So that activity uh, right now, the best we have, it will start sometime in the June time frame. And then 250 at 441 and going south all the way to Route 96. Uh, they'll be rehabbing all of that. And uh, I'll only speak to the Penfield piece, uh, and that is, is that we're trying to get as much done in the evening. I've encouraged my colleague, uh, Mike Barker, uh, in Parrington to consider doing the same so that uh, you minimize impact on traffic and businesses uh, during the day overall. So that's the big uh, project that we've got going for this year uh, from a roadway standpoint. And then just a couple of uh, fun, fun things that I like to share. The Empire Center uh, for Public Policy uh, rated websites across New York State. And um, there, were, there, were, uh, there was one county, one city, two towns, one village, and one school district that received a passing grade uh, at, at, a, at a B. So there's still room and opportunity for growth. Uh, but Penfield was one of the two towns and uh, one of the six uh, communities out of um, you know, a, a thousand or more entities across New York uh, for being the most transparent, uh, easiest to maneuver, uh, most information. So we're very proud of that. You know, it's individuals like uh, Dave Renner, Jim Costello, all of our department heads that uh, provide that feed to make that happen. So a B is good, an A is better. Uh, that's uh, what we're looking at. Uh, solar projects, uh, we continue to uh, look and grow our uh, solar projects. We do have two active ones uh, today, and we're looking to do a larger one uh, that will cover a majority of our facilities at our DPW offices. So uh, we're currently uh, working uh, with the consultants and uh, NYSERDA to uh, move that uh, forward. Four Mile Creek uh, Nature Preserve, uh, there is a piece of property, approximately 20 acres, on Route 250 uh, between uh, Penfield Center, Northrop, or I guess Northrop and, and Plank Road uh, is the better, better location. Um, the Amish uh, family uh, own property on both sides. Uh, they wanted to leave uh, a legacy. Um, uh, the, the kids wanted to leave a legacy for their parents. So they donated uh, 20 acres to the town, and that'll be known as the Four Mile Creek Nature Preserve, and uh, we'll look to uh, make that open and available for uh, residents to enjoy. And then from a budget piece, uh, so I'm not going to get into any silly uh, pie charts and uh, graphs or anything like that, but I think it's always important to let you know what the, what the financial health of the community is. So in 2014, we budgeted approximately $16.2 million uh, to run your local government. Uh, we came in at 15.9, so we were just a little bit under $300,000 uh, in our budget. And uh, for 2015, uh, we've kept that at two, uh, 15, nine, uh, 15 million, uh, 900,000 uh, to run uh, your local government. Keeping the services the same as they are and uh, just looking for ways to continue to manage our cost, reduce our cost, uh, share or, or, or at least not uh, have any of that uh, share go across uh, to our taxpayers. So that's, uh, that's been our goal of the board. Uh, we've been able to, to do that now for uh, the fifth year. And, and, it, and it hasn't come without you know, some difficult uh, decisions. You know, we haven't replaced one for one. Uh, we have made some uh, changes uh, to um, uh, operations uh, with, through some reorganizations. Uh, but it were things to be more efficient 
and again to reduce costs because uh, what we can't count on is uh, getting a lot of support uh, from our friends uh, from the federal and state uh, government. So we have to look to do it ourselves. So uh, I just want to recognize our, our entire team that works so hard uh, to manage uh, those costs and uh, we'll continue with a flat, flat tax of 15. We always say, you know, whether you're, you're here as a business uh, resident or a uh, resident in a business, you know, be informed about your community. Uh, there's a lot of ways that we attempt to do that. Um, we have our uh, Penfield uh, TV. Uh, we've got our Penfield.org, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, all of the uh, social media outlets. So uh, we're, we're trying very hard, and our board has really made this a priority in 15. Just when you think you're communicating well, uh, there's always room for improvement, and uh, I hear that loud and clear from the board uh, to take it to that next step. Uh, so that's gonna be even more active in 2015 and as we go forward. So as always, uh, any questions, uh, please feel free to com you know, contact me. Thank you, thank you for your time. Um, thank you for your interest, uh, but most importantly, thank you for everything you do in this community because it does uh, make a difference. So I'll turn this back. Thank you.